UTPA Women's Soccer takes to their brand new pitch for the first time. We take you to the grand opening of the UTPA Soccer and Track and Field Complex. UTPA Baseball welcomes a familiar face to the coaching staff. And men's and women's basketball into full team practices. We take you to the court to check in on what some of the men's returners are expecting and how excited the women are to finally get started. This! is Brown Country. Hey everyone and welcome to Bronx Country, I'm Jonah Goldberg. When UTPA Athletics announced the start of soccer teams, there was talk about a new on-campus soccer and track and field complex. On January 29th, UTPA Athletics and PBK Sports released renderings of what the complex would look like as construction began. 254 days later, it was time for the grand opening. Large crowd on hand to enjoy the new facility, including the ribbon cutting. Mark the time and the date. At 3.07 p.m. on October 10th, 2014, the UTPA Soccer and Track and Field Complex officially opened for business. Fans packed the stands to see warm-ups, and then, before the start of the match, Val Amantia Paisan presented UTPA Athletics with a check for $275,000 for the inaugural William D. Paisan Endowed Scholarship for Intercollegiate Soccer, a scholarship that provides a minimum of one scholarship for women's soccer and one for men's soccer each year. This year's honorees were April Compeon and Erica Gonzalez of women's soccer and Jose Sosa of men's soccer. Speaking of men's soccer, there were quite a few former Bronx men's soccer players in attendance at the match, and they were honored on the field following the Czech presentation. Men's soccer, which was last played at UTPA in 1997, returns next year. Next on the agenda were the starting lineups, and then the UTPA Army ROTC presented the nation's colors before the national anthem. And then, after all that, it was time to play some soccer. Pick it up in the 41st minute. Allison Smith with the pass ahead to Amy Intulai, who streaks across the field and buries it. First goal in complex history, Intulai's sixth, Bronx up 1-0. 62nd minute. Think Andrea Barrera is trapped in the corner? I don't think so. Trolls the axis and finds Smith, who finishes it. Second goal for Smith, Bronx up 2-0. Just a few minutes later, Smith continuing to have an absolutely ridiculous day. This time she finds Zinnia Hennig, who goes one-on-one -on -one with the goal and wins. First career goal for Hennig, and she scores it in front of her family, who came in from El Paso. Smith finishes with a career-high four points. The Bronx win the first match in UTPA soccer and track and field complex history three to nothing. It's awesome to win here. I mean, there's so much excitement, so much, like we've been watching this since it was basically dirt, and now it's, you know, this, and it's so amazing, and we're all really excited. It feels amazing, just knowing that we're home, uh, and we got a shout out, it just, it just feels amazing. Um, it was great, we, we put up a lot of points, and we made the crowd excited, and I think we played a good game. It was great for the atmosphere here. Today was very important. It was very important for fans, very important for the community. It was a tremendous occasion for us to uh, not only debut our, our great facility here, but put together a good second half performance and then get some goals and, and go out as winners. Two days later, the Bronx taking on Kansas City for the second Sunday in a row, and this was quite a match. Spotlight Aubrey Coley, the Bronx freshman goalkeeper really forced to work in this one, giving the Bronx a chance by making a career-high 17 saves. Ten of those saves came in the first half, during which time the Bronx didn't have a shot on goal while going down one nothing. So we pick it up early in the second half. Amy Intulai with the shot, and Nina Gianos punches it over the first time she's tested. But that sets up a corner kick for the Bronx. Emily Ortiz places it perfectly, and Hannah Spetz heads it home. Match knotted up at one. And that's where the score stayed for almost 60 more minutes. Just over a minute left in the second overtime. Hannah Presley for the Bronx, Nikki Lynch for Kansas City, Presley on the ball, and then Lynch grabs Presley and pulls her away in order to take over. Let's take another look at that because it's important. Wow. 
We can look at it from three different angles and a clear grab there. Play allowed to continue and Lynch feeds Whitney Lucas who gets behind the defense. Coley puts up her hand thinking that maybe there should be an offsides, but it's not called and then Lucas finds the back of the net with 57 seconds left. The Bronx wait on the field to see if the call will be overturned, but to no avail as the Kangaroos are given a 2-1 to -one victory over the Bronx. We did an excellent job. I'm so proud of the girls today. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't end that well we want to, uh, but I'm definitely so proud and uh, we just have to keep it up. Well, we, we fought hard. Both teams had the chances and, uh, you know, in the end, we feel unfortunate to have lost, but again, we played pretty well. We fought and uh, we put ourselves in a, in a position of respect from last, uh, last time we played these, uh, these teams. Here's a look at the WAC standings. The Bronx in fourth place with seven points at 2-2-1. Kansas City leads the way at 4-0-0. The Bronx next face the two teams between them and Kansas City, Utah Valley on Friday at 4, and Seattle on Sunday at 1, in the final two matches at the UTPA Soccer and Track and Field Complex this season. The best three teams back to back to back. Uh, we have to play at least like this, if not better, uh, next week. But I know we will take some confidence from this game and continue to move forward. We're improving as a team. It's a long-term project, and this just shows that we're on the right track. It was a big week for facilities at UTPA. Along with the opening of the soccer and track and field complex, UTPA officially took ownership of Edinburgh Baseball Stadium following a donation from the City of Edinburgh to the UT Board of Regents. Lots of upgrades coming to the stadium. If you're interested in becoming a part of that, naming rights opportunities are available. A complete list can be found at BronxAthleticFund.com. Bronx baseball has already begun practicing in their stadium. Last week, we told you about the start of full team practices. The Bronx have had a familiar face on the field, but he's not a player anymore. Former top catcher Mike McCarthy is out there working from the other side of the dugout. Romeo Villarreal has the story. When former UTPA baseball player Mike McCarthy decided to come back down to the Valley and get his master's degree, he didn't expect he'd be coaching on the UTPA baseball team this year. I actually came down here and um, I knew I wanted to go back to school. So I started my master's program and coach said, why not help out here? You know, learn if you like coaching, see if you like it and we'll go from there. He was a great player. He was a great student. He graduated uh, with an English lit uh, major, um, played some professional baseball. Uh, after he got uh, done with professional baseball, uh, he came back. Um, he's dating a young lady here from the Valley. So as soon as we found out that uh, he was back, uh, we asked him if he would be interested in uh, becoming our volunteer. Um, and he said yes. So what he's doing now, obviously with us, he's our volunteer coach, but he's also getting his uh, master's degree. So Mike's a, a great, uh, great person. Uh, great young coach. He has a bright future, and we're, we're lucky to have him. One of the first things Coach McCarthy noticed was just how much work the coaches put in that players don't really see. You know, I've learned a lot. I've learned a ton. Um, you know, throughout the next uh, few months, you know, before the season gets going, you know, I'm sure I'll learn a lot, and I'm excited to get going. When you're a player, you don't see half the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. You know, I always thought, oh, the coaches come out for practice, and that was it, but... No, I start early in the morning in the office, and then, you know, coaching on the field, that's the easy part of it all. One of the things Coach Mentrana saw in Coach McCarthy was the trait he looks for in every member of his team. Well, you know what? You always want to bring back guys that played under you because they know the system, Romeo. And with Mike having played for three years, he knows our system very, very well. Plus, he has the, something that you can't teach, and that's uh, HWA, how to win awareness. Um, you can't teach it. And you can only develop it through anticipation and extreme concentration. And Mike had that as a player. So we try to instill that in all of our players to develop how to win awareness. Um, and Mike always had it as a player. And again, it's, it's always good to bring back a former player, that type of player, that type of person, that type of student that Mike is. Reporting from the Edinburgh Baseball Stadium for Bronx Country, this is Romeo Villadiel. UTPA men's and women's basketball both on the court for full team practices this week. Next on Bronx Country, we take to the hardwood to catch up with both teams. We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Ball 
right wing, goes for the tie. And he does it again! Nolan straight to the hoop, yeah. ties the game! All with the three, with two, the desperation he goes in! Jack Bowler from half court! Bronx win! Bronx win! Get your Bronx basketball season tickets now by calling 665-2221 or logging on to utpabronx.com. This commercial is brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. The UTPA men's basketball team is almost two weeks into full team practices. There are a lot of new faces on the court, but it's the five returners that are setting the expectations this season. Romeo Villarreal has more. With only five players returning for the Bronx, only two of which saw any playtime last year, the players know they have a long way to go in getting ready for the upcoming season. But this hasn't put a damper on the spirits of returner Shaq Hines, who is confident in his leadership skills and the abilities of this team. Once the summer came, I seen we had about eight new guys, so I already knew it was going to be a big learning experience for them guys this year, so I knew they had a lot of learning to do. It, it just makes me a better leader, you know, because it's a bunch of new guys, so I had to step up and be a leader and teach the guys, you know, the offense, the defense, and really everything we went over last year. While this may be a less experienced team than the one we saw last year, returner Mo McDonald is confident that the skill level of the players is much higher than it was last year. Me, Shaq, and, uh, and Boga, we, we knew that we had a big task coming in with, uh, with a bunch of new guys, but like I said before, we knew that we had the talent at least coming in. Coach picked a recruited, excuse me, a lot of great talent. So we knew that it would be a fun learning experience and we knew that we had a chance to do some big things. Guys are filling in right into place, right where we thought we could. Uh, we have new guys that are coming in there knowing their roles. We have new roles for the returning guys. So uh, it should be an exciting year. For Bronx Country, this is Romeo Villarreal. And while the men are now in their second full week of full team practices, the UTPA women's basketball team is just getting underway. We send it back out to Romeo on the basketball beat. The first few practices for any team can say a lot about how their season will go. And by all accounts, the women's basketball team's first few practices went really well. The first few practices went very well. Like, we came together as one. We worked hard, we got better, and we're ready for the season. Really, main thing we're focusing on is ball movement, conditioning, make sure we're able to run up and down the court, and personnel. Coach Tidwell has seen a lot of positives these first few practices, but knows there is still a lot to get done, including the implementation of a new defensive scheme. Practice has been very uh, intense. Uh, we're shooting the ball pretty well. I like that, but uh, we have some athleticism. We're deeper this year, and I think the main thing that we're going to be able to do is even more up-tempo than we were last year. We try to uh, develop our offensive rhythm, plus we're trying to develop a defensive terminology. Uh, I have uh, Gabe Henry and Anthony Anderson this year are going to be in charge of the defensive schemes with my under my umbrella, of course. But uh, we're trying to get that determined, trying to get the right ones in the right positions. And uh, every practice is vital, and we're looking forward to a good season. Reporting from the UTPA Fieldhouse for Bronx Country, this is Romeo Villadiel. Coaches Hipsher and Tidwell were in Las Vegas this week for the WAC basketball preview, meaning preseason accolades and polls are out. And then this Friday is Bronx Madness. We have full coverage from Orleans Arena next week on Bronx Country. UTPA volleyball back on the court at Texas Southern, acing their way to a road sweep. The Bronx recorded a season high 12 aces, eight of which came from the left arm of Alicia Watson. That's the third highest single match total in program history. Watson also with six kills and eight digs for good measure. I mean, it was really surprising. It was good because we put a lot of work in and practice and focusing on serving, you know, just staying more consistent, thinking about, you know, key words. Whenever you go back to the line, that way you stay more consistent each time you go. And so it was pretty cool. Played hard, played well. Uh, they hit very well in their gym, um, you know, but we thankfully did, uh, did enough. Uh, it was, it was one of those matches where we just kind of had to keep battling. We were down in each of the sets. And so to see us come back like that and continue to play and finish off you know, a set when we were down was, was some improvement that we've been looking for. Um, had to do it three times, not necessarily my choice, but uh, you know, at least we did it all three times. Bronx had two-time defending WAC champion New Mexico State, and Haley Durham had a big match. One of her match high 11 kills. Corinne Acuff played well off the bench. This is one of her four kills on six attacks. 
And then let's make sure all three of the middles get in on the action as Maria Klepo combines with Diara Reynolds on the block. At the Bronx fall, three to nothing. Gaudy numbers for Durham and Anjanae Janda. Durham's 11 kills on 500 hitting to go with three blocks. Janda with 10 kills on 389 hitting. Alicia Watson was next with seven kills and nine digs. You know, we were really successful with, you know, attacking their outside blockers and just staying offensive. Against a big team like that, you've just got to keep swinging at them, keep, you know, not, not worry about the, the mistakes that you might make here or there, uh, but you've got to keep battling, got to keep hitting um, and staying, you know, staying on top of the ball. And uh, I thought we did that. We had a couple little lulls here and there late in set one, one in set two that kind of made the difference in, in the match that way. But, uh, you know, for us to come out and put a, a third set together like we did and be right there with a, a big, strong team, you know, the preseason favorite, um, you know, gives us something to build off of going into this week. Here's what the WAC standings look like. The Bronx in seventh place, a game up on Chicago State. The Bronx next opponent, Chicago State. That's Thursday at seven. It's Bronx against breast cancer night, so dig pink. The Bronx then play host to Kansas City on Saturday at one. On to the links. Both golf teams at the Harold Thunston Invitational at Sam Houston State. Ladies first, as the Bronx improve in every round to finish in fifth. That third round 303 is tied for the eighth lowest single round score in program history. How about Melissa Bernal? The senior shooting a one under 70 in the third round, tied for the second lowest single round score in program history. The Bronx back on the course this week at Arkansas State. Well, I was really impressed with, with how they um, accepted me as their new coach and, and were able to trust me pretty much right away. Um, so I thought we improved with each round, and that's a good sign. Uh, and I think that, you know, as we continue through the year, we'll just see more and more improvement. Maybe not in the score as much, but in the actual uh, competitive situations and how they respond to them. Men's golf also improving in every round of the event, en route to a sixth-place finish. Nicholas Platret continues his torrid season, tying for eighth with a three over 217, including an even 71 in the third round. Great second round for Chris Felix, coming in one under 70. The Bronx are back in action Monday and Tuesday at New Mexico State. The thing that made me the happiest about this tournament was that we improved each round. Uh, we've been working really hard lately on fitness, nutrition, hydration. So it was uh, great to see that all that came together and that they were stronger the last round than they were the first round. So uh, as a coach, I couldn't have been happier. Cross Country at Incarnate Word for their final meet before hosting the WAC Championships in a few weeks. Despite tough conditions due to rain, some strong showings as Jennifer Zapata led the Bronx on the women's side with a 10th place finish. That's out of 134 runners. Teresa Sova, Alexandria Munoz, and Roxana Viaruri also in the upper half. Both teams finished in fifth as Ricardo Granados led the Bronx on the men's side, coming in 47th out of 171 runners. PJ Izaguirre, Hansel Ibarra, and Martin Perez also in the upper half of the finishers. We saw some good things out there. You know, we had the top guys resting that weekend. Um, so we had the rest of the guys out there kind of pushing one to see them compete and see how they did as we, we worked towards kind of rounding out the roster for the conference championships. On the women's side, again, you know, they had some extreme conditions with the weather that broke out in the middle of the race, but they, we saw some great fortitude. You know, they, they persevered, they ran tough, and we still saw some good results. Imagine if you could win a trip to Vegas or a Cowboys game, and all you had to do was donate to the Bronc Athletic Fund. Guess what? It's reality. Coming up on Bronc Country, it's time for the Lucky 7-7 Raffle. There are a lot of members of the Bronca Athletic Fund who help to support student-athlete scholarships, and it's not necessarily people with a lot of money, but instead with a lot of drive. Former men's basketball player Jim Board raises thousands of dollars for the Bronca Athletic Fund every year through the Lucky 7-7 raffle. Romeo Villarreal has the story. The Lucky 7-7 raffle is an event put on by former men's basketball player Jim Board in an attempt to raise money for the Bronca Athletic Fund. This is our 10th annual fundraiser uh, for the university. Uh, we started out uh, the first year, first few years, with the Las Vegas Extravaganza, which was uh, you know a private jet uh, for trip for eight people, Bellagio, suites at Bellagio, the old show there, 
spa treatment, uh, dinner for all eight of the eight of the winners. Um, then after that, we did that for six years, and then we started our Lucky Seven. So this is overall, this is our 10th annual. Uh, we've been generating uh, close to $40,000 a year, or actually a little better than $40,000 over the past past 10 years. And uh, we hope we continue it and uh, be able to support the Bronx in this way. Longtime participant in the raffle, Javier Perez, talks about his experience winning the raffle and his thoughts on donating to UTPA Athletics. I've been, uh, I was extremely lucky in 2010. Uh, I won, and, uh, and seven of my best friends and myself who went. We had a beautiful time. Uh, it was a great, uh, uh, a great uh, three days stay at the Bellagio. And uh, well, thanks to my friends, you know, that they got me on to this, that I was able to afford, not only by myself, but with my brothers. And we got, we got lucky and we really cashed out on that prize. Uh, it, it's a beautiful thing, not necessarily the prize, but doing what we're doing, uh, getting money, uh, fundraising money for the scholarship for Pan American. For Bronx Country, this is Romeo Villadiel. The Lucky 7-7 seven, seven raffle not the only way to support UTPA Athletics. You can donate to the Bronx Athletic Fund right now. You can become a member of the BAF for just $50 a year. All of the money raised goes directly to student athlete scholarships. So visit BronxAthleticFund.com today to see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student athletes. We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Ball on the right wing, goes for the tie. And he does it again! Nolan straight to the hoop, ties the game! Over with three, with two, the desperation he goes in! Jack Bowler from Airport! Bronx win! Bronx win! Get your Bronx basketball season tickets now by calling 665-2221 or logging on to utpabronx.com. This commercial is brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Here's what's coming up for the Bronx. Women's soccer with its final two home matches of the season. Friday at four against Utah Valley and Sunday at one against Seattle. Volleyball also at home, hosting Chicago State on Thursday at seven and Kansas City Saturday at one. Bronx Madness will cap off Spirit Week Friday night at the Fieldhouse. Men's and women's tennis head to the ITA regionals. And men's golf is at New Mexico State. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in Bronx country this week. Schedule another visit for next week. But until then, Go Bronx! excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. 
We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Ball on the right wing, goes for the tie. And he does it again! Nolan straight to the hoop, ties the game! All with the three, with two, the desperation he goes in! Jack Bowler from half court! Bronx win! Bronx win! Get your Bronx basketball season tickets now by calling 665-2221 or logging on to utpabronx.com. This commercial is brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics.